Before leaving ZRC Apex and setting off across America, there is one round that completely altered my game, and you'll see why later in this video. Meet Walter, a technical purple belt and one of my favorite training partners at my home gym in North Carolina. Before getting into Jiu Jitsu, we warm up with a tango, both looking for an early foot sweep highlight. I go for one of my favorite judo style throws, an uchimata, but nearly fall victim to a front headlock as Walter snaps onto my neck, and if you're a fan of snapping, stay tuned for one of my upcoming knee slices. Before that though, I start to set up another foot sweep by pummeling a deep underhook across his hip and winning the head positioning battle. My attack is shut down by Walter's supreme balance and my lackluster judo. Then to avoid a snap down, Walter counters with a well-timed guard pull into single leg X. One of my favorite ways of dealing with this guard is to control the inside leg and peel the outside leg to front pummel with my inside and back step out of the guard. I then hit an ACL hating knee slice to start attacking my pass. Truthfully, while it looks bad, thanks to young age and shooting my knee at a downward angle facing away from his hips, it prevents almost all of the pressure that could harm my knee. Keep in mind, this means I'm not shooting towards Walter. Rather, I'm shooting away to prevent damage knee slicing from single leg X. To further keep myself safe, I'm allowing my knee to be peeled down and focus on flattening Walter out with my underhook. This also helps me prevent quarter guard as you can't really lock it up on someone's knee. Walt realizes this and prepares to let go of my leg by putting himself into a good position to catch it and enter deep half. For those of you unfamiliar with the deep half guard, it's a stupid position and not worth learning. I'm saying that because it's true and not because I hate when people do it to me. Walter will use this to safely transition into turtle and understanding that I've missed most submission threats from here, I let go and roll out to guard. He'll start off his passing onslaught with a leg drag, but keeps his level a little too high, allowing me to invert into 50-50. Luckily, we run into Colton and Travis, allowing us to reset out of that trash and do something actually fun. As we stand back up, we start hand fighting again, and I dive in for a deep underhook. Walter will sprawl out to his hip, and then I look for a front headlock. He's quick to disengage and get back into a dominant standing position. I complain about the camera angle, but shout out to my dad for doing it for free and we take what we can get. In the midst of this, Walter grabs an underhook and completely slams me onto the mat with a beautiful Uchimata. Now entering your day one knee shield half guard, let me show you the best half guard sweep in my arsenal. First of all, I never want to allow Walter's shoulder to reach below my knee, so I push him off and re-pummel my leg back in front. Then as Walter sits high on my knee shield, I use that to expose the unhook and shoot both of my knee and elbow through this space. I'll take my leg and wrap it around his heel to torque his knee and peel it back. I'll then start to come up on this leg and with no ability to post backwards, I transition to a double leg to get back on top. Walter attempts to shrimp, but I'm hoisting his hips in the air, preventing him from getting his feet to the mat. I do make an unfortunate mistake as he tries to frame. I switch my base too low on his hips, increasing the difficulty to move to a higher side control. Luckily, I'm able to keep my hip pressure on his upper body just long enough to transition and grab his head. One super cool thing about Walter is that he's very hard to hold down, making the role super transition oriented and forcing me to be ready at every turn. Either that or I'm just god awful at pinning people. Probably both. With that being said, he turtles again and puts me back into single leg X, throwing all my hard work down the drain as we reset. This time, however, he actually locks onto what I believe is called a bear trap, completely shutting down my ability to weave my leg without drastically exposing my back or giving up a potential calf slicer. It's crucial that I keep my left leg out of the mix as controlling both legs would easily lead to one of these unfortunate endings. I find my escape by taking a risky back step completely over his body, but I manage to escape the bear trap and regain my super cool leg weaving style of defense. I mistakenly leave my leg a little too close to his body and I now have to defend another deep half entry. Luckily, I find a cheeky underhook of my own and start to drop my weight down. Regaining control of the position, I'm able to pummel my right leg out and secure the guard pass. Not wanting to lose it like last time, I focus on securing a strong cross face, getting chest to chest, and keeping Walter's back flat on the mat. From here, I go for a big step over in the mount and make sure to avoid getting forced back into half guard by circling my leg high around his legs and pocketing it into his hip. With a deep underhook, I forcefully chair sit onto his back and jab my left arm under his chin to attack a rear naked choke. Because I already had his right arm trapped, all I have to do is control his left arm and use my head to push his head against my choking arm to finish the submission. As we sit up for round two, we hand fight and I look to put Walter shin to shin. This will allow me to off balance him fairly easily and I reinforce that by looping my arm under his hips and grabbing a two on one wrist grip. With only one upper body post, I elevate Walter and force him to post with his right hand, completely exposing his back. I'm slow on the come up, allowing Walter to wrap up Wizard. I then attack one of my signature triangles, but as an avid training partner and happy subscriber to Carsa on YouTube, he's keen to the attack and defends it by keeping his knee above my thigh. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for, Carsa breaks his arm. <laughs> oh, 
being way too greedy and trying to force the underhook, I end up snapping my elbow. While it's not really a life-threatening injury, it did prevent me from knee-cutting to the right for a small portion of a very important trip coming up, challenging gym leaders across the US, adding a huge barrier to my game, but forcing me to find new ways to play jiu-jitsu. Ha, ha, ha.